Hello everybody and welcome to the Ancient Architects Christmas Special. As it's Christmas, I thought it would be a good opportunity to create a special episode to tell you the true story of Christmas. To say it began with the birth of Christ would actually be historically inaccurate. In fact, the first recorded date of Christmas being celebrated on December the 25th was 336 AD, during the time of the Roman Emperor Constantine, who was, unsurprisingly, the first Christian Emperor of Rome. A few years later, Pope Julius I officially declared that the birth of Jesus would be celebrated on the 25th of December each year, and the rest, as they say, is history. Today, in the 21st century, Christmas is more of a worldwide cultural and commercial phenomenon, and less of a sacred religious holiday, with Santa Claus having an arguably greater significance than Jesus Christ. But, saying that, you could argue that Santa has just as much claim over Christmas as Jesus, as it is wrong to assume that Christmas began with Christianity. It does in fact have a history that goes back way further. Centuries before the believed date of birth of Jesus Christ, early Europeans celebrated light and birth in the darkest days of winter. The winter solstice was a time of great rejoice, as it meant the worst of winter was now behind them, and they could look ahead to longer days and extended hours of sunlight. In Scandinavia, they celebrated Yule, from December 21st through to January. In recognition of the return of the sun, fathers and sons would bring home large logs, which they would set on fire. The people would feast until the log burnt out, which could take as long as 12 days. This is the origin of the modern-day chocolate yule log. The Norse believed that each spark from the fire represented a new pig or calf that would be born during the coming year. Many ancient people believed that the sun was a god, and that winter came every year because the sun god had become weak or sick. They celebrated the solstice because it meant that at last the sun god would begin to get well. Evergreen boughs were hung to remind people that the green plants would grow again when the sun god was strong and summer would return. The ancient Egyptians worshipped Ra, who wore the sun as a blazing disc in his crown. At the winter solstice, when Ra began to recover from his illness, the Egyptians filled their homes with green palm rushes, which symbolised for them the triumph of life over death. This is probably the earliest concept for the Christmas tree. In Rome, where winters were not as harsh as those further north, they celebrated a festival known as Saturnalia, a holiday in honour of Saturn, the god of agriculture. Beginning in the week leading up to the winter solstice, and continuing for a full month, Saturnalia was a hedonistic time, when food and drink were plentiful, and the normal Roman social order was turned upside down. For a month, slaves would become masters, peasants were in command of the city, and businesses and schools were closed, so that everybody could join in the festivities. Like in ancient Egypt, the people would decorate their temples and homes with evergreen boughs. Also at this time, Romans observed Juvenalia, a feast honouring the children of Rome. In addition, members of the upper classes often celebrated the birthday of Mithra, the god of the unconquerable sun, on none other than December 25th. The sun god Mithra was an infant god, and for many Romans, his birthday was the most sacred day of the year. Interestingly, in the early years of Christianity, Easter was the main holiday, and the birth of Jesus was not even celebrated. The birth date of December 25th was given to Jesus in the 4th century, when the Roman Emperor Constantine wanted to end all pagan god worship and overprint their sacred days with Christian holidays. This is why church officials instituted Christmas Day. It wasn't created to genuinely celebrate the actual birth of Jesus, but rather to lessen the importance of pagan worship. Nobody knows when Jesus was born, and the Bible offers no clues, and in truth, there isn't even any credible evidence to say that Jesus was an historical figure, and it is more likely that he was merely one of the many so-called gods worshipped by the mystery cults of the Romans. 
It is just that Jesus was adopted by Constantine and turned into a historical figure to unify the Roman Empire. If he was a real person, evidence suggests that he should have been born in the spring, as why would shepherds be herding in the middle of winter? Whatever the truth around Jesus, it was Pope Julius I who chose December 25th as his date of birth, but we know that this was to adopt and absorb the traditions of the pagan Saturnalia, Juvenalia and Mithra traditions. Jesus was known as the light of the world, and Mithra was the sun god, born on December 25th. Therefore, combining the attributes of Jesus with Mithra made him more palatable to the pagans of Rome. Christmas Day was first known as the Feast of the Nativity, and the custom spread to Egypt by 432 AD, and then Saint Augustine brought it to England in the 6th century. Christmas, as it was then called, reached Scandinavia by the end of the 8th century. By holding Christmas at the same time as traditional winter solstice festivals, church leaders increased the chances of Christmas being embraced, but they gave up trying to dictate how it should be celebrated. And that is why we see a bizarre mix of pagan traditions weaved into the modern day celebrations, such as decorating trees and making yule logs. By the Middle Ages, Christianity had, for the most part, replaced the pagan religions, but the pagan practices certainly continued. On Christmas, after believers attended church, there would be a drunken, carnival-like atmosphere. The poor would go to the houses of the rich and demand the best food and drink. If the owners failed to comply, their visitors would terrorise them with mischief. This custom originated from Saturnalia, when peasants took control of Rome. Christmas became the time of year when the upper classes could repay their real or imagined debt to society by entertaining less fortunate people. In the 16th century, German Christians began bringing decorated trees into their homes, a memory of their solstice celebrating pagan origins. It is widely believed that Martin Luther the 16th century Protestant reformer first added lighted candles to a tree. Walking towards his home one winter evening, composing a sermon, he was awed by the brilliance of stars twinkling amidst the trees. So, to recapture the scene for his family, he erected a tree in the main room of his house and wired its branches with lighted candles. In the 17th century, a wave of religious reform changed the way Christmas was celebrated in Europe. When Oliver Cromwell and his Puritan forces took over England in 1645, they vowed to rid England of decadence and, as part of their effort, cancelled Christmas. But, by popular demand, Charles II was restored to the throne and with him the return of the popular holiday. The pilgrims who came to America in 1620 were even more orthodox in their Puritan beliefs than Cromwell and therefore Christmas was not a holiday in early America. From 1659 to 1681, the celebration of Christmas was actually outlawed in Boston, and anyone exhibiting the Christmas spirit was fined five shillings. In contrast, in the Jamestown settlement, Captain John Smith reported that Christmas was enjoyed by all and passed without incident. After the American Revolution, English customs fell out of favour, including Christmas, and it wasn't actually declared a federal holiday until June the 26th, 1870. Then, the Americans really embraced Christmas and reinvented it, changing it from a raucous carnival holiday into a family-centred day of peace and nostalgia. This was because the early 19th century was a period of class conflict and turmoil, with high unemployment and gang rioting by the disenchanted classes which so often occurred during the Christmas season. In 1828, the New York City Council instituted the first police force in response to a Christmas riot. This led to certain members of the upper classes trying to change the way Christmas was celebrated in America. In 1819, best-selling author Washington Irving wrote a series of stories about the celebration of Christmas. 
The sketches feature a squire who invited the peasants into his home for the holiday, and, in contrast to the problems faced in American society, the two groups mingled effortlessly. In Irving's mind, Christmas should be a peaceful, warm-hearted holiday, bringing groups together across lines of wealth or social status. Irving's account wasn't based on any existing tradition, it was fictional, and now many historians say that Irving's account actually invented the modern tradition of Christmas. Also around this time, English author Charles Dickens created the classic holiday tale A Christmas Carol. The story's message, the importance of charity and goodwill towards all people, struck a powerful chord in the United States and in England and showed members of Victorian society the benefits of celebrating the holiday. The family was also becoming less disciplined and more sensitive to the emotional needs of children. Christmas provided families with a day when they could lavish attention and gifts on their children without appearing to spoil them. As Americans began to embrace Christmas as a perfect family holiday, old customs were unearthed and Americans built a Christmas tradition all their own. It included pieces of many other customs, such as decorating trees, sending cards, and giving gifts. The first record of a Christmas tree on display was in the 1830s by the German settlers of Pennsylvania, who brought the 16th century tradition with them. The Pennsylvania German settlement had community trees as early as 1747, but as late as the 1840s, Christmas trees were still seen as pagan symbols and were not accepted by most Americans. But this all changed with an influx of German and Irish immigrants who had undermined the Puritan American way of life and whose practices became more and more acceptable and widespread. In England, it wasn't until Victorian times that the idea of having a Christmas tree in the house was popular and it was the Queen's own family who introduced the custom to the country. In 1846, Queen Victoria and her German prince, Albert, were sketched in the Illustrated London News standing with their children around a Christmas tree. And, as a popular royal family, what was done in court immediately became fashionable, not only in Britain, but also with the East Coast American society. The Christmas tree had officially arrived, and it quickly became an accepted icon of Christmas. The development of Christmas as a festival is certainly not straightforward, but we can clearly see that what we celebrate today, as well as its associated iconic symbols, have very little to do with the birth of Jesus Christ, but it is in fact a strong pagan festival of the sun, with customs and traditions borrowed and adapted from a number of different cultures. But one symbol of Christmas that is so iconic today and needs special attention in this video is that of Santa Claus. Santa Claus, in his popular red and white colours, didn't become the striking Christmas icon that he is until the 1930s, thanks to the advertising campaigns of Coca-Cola. But the origins of the famous character actually go back to the 3rd century, way before December the 25th was assigned as Jesus' birthday. The legend of Santa Claus can be traced back to a monk named Saint Nicholas. It is believed that Nicholas was born sometime around 280 AD in Patara near Myra in modern day Turkey. Much admired for his piety and kindness, Saint Nicholas became the subject of many legends. It is said that he gave away all of his inherited wealth and travelled the countryside helping the poor and sick. Over the course of many years, Nicholas's popularity spread, and he became known as the protector of children and sailors, and his feast day is celebrated on the anniversary of his death, December the 6th. This was traditionally a lucky day to make large purchases or to get married. By the Renaissance, St Nicholas was the most popular saint in Europe, and even after the Protestant Reformation, when the veneration of saints began to be discouraged, St Nicholas maintained a positive reputation, especially in Holland. And it was Dutch families who brought St Nicholas to America in the late 18th century. In December 1773 and 1774, a New York newspaper reported groups of Dutch families 
gathering to honour him on the anniversary of his death. The name Santa Claus evolved from St Nicholas's Dutch name, Sinterklaas, which was a shortened form of St Nicholas. In 1804, John Pintard, a member of the New York Historical Society, distributed woodcuts of St Nicholas at the Society's annual meeting. The background of the engraving contains now familiar Santa images, including stockings filled with toys and fruit hanging over a fireplace. In 1809, Washington Irving helped popularise the Sinterklaas stories when he referred to St Nicholas as the patron saint of New York in his book The History of New York. In 1822, Clement Clark Moore, a minister, wrote a long Christmas poem for his three daughters entitled An Account of a Visit from St Nicholas. This is responsible for our modern image of Santa Claus as a right jolly elf with a portly figure and a supernatural ability to ascend a chimney with a mere nod of his head. His poem helped popularise the now familiar image of Santa Claus, who flew from house to house on Christmas Eve in a miniature sleigh led by eight flying reindeer, leaving presents for deserving children. This led to an 1881 cartoon by Thomas Nast, which was based on the poem, and it is the first likeness that matches the modern-day image of Santa Claus. It appeared in Harper's Weekly and depicted Santa as a rotund, cheerful man with a full white beard holding a sack laden with toys for lucky children. It was Nast who gave Santa his bright red suit, trimmed with white fur, having a North Pole workshop, elves and a wife. The tradition of dressing up as Santa Claus began in the early 1890s by the Salvation Army. They needed money to pay for free Christmas meals for needy families and began dressing up unemployed men in Santa suits and sending them onto the streets to attract donations. The Salvation Army Santas have been ringing bells on street corners of America ever since. But Santa Claus was not the only St Nicholas-inspired gift giver to make an appearance at Christmas time. In Germany and Switzerland there was Kris Kringle, in Scandinavia, there was Yultomten, a jolly elf who delivered gifts in a sleigh drawn by goats. English legend explains that Father Christmas visits each home on Christmas Eve to fill children's stockings with holiday treats. Père Noël is responsible for filling shoes of French children, and in Italy, a woman called Le Befana was a kindly witch who rode a broomstick down the chimneys of Italian homes to deliver toys into the stockings of lucky children. So there you have it. The true history of Christmas is certainly not a straightforward timeline of events, but an assortment of historic cultural icons, brought together by the movement of people out of Europe to the wider world. Its origins are certainly not Christian, and today, in the 21st century, whether the people believe it or not, the Western world celebrates an ancient pagan winter solstice festival with a huge amount of pagan iconography, such as Christmas trees and Yule logs, and with a strong focus on a saint whose true identity is all but lost under a red velvet coat, and a so-called son of God who is only associated with December the 25th to attract the followers of a popular pagan sun god. Thank you very much for watching the Ancient Architects Christmas special. Please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, Please leave a comment and have a very Merry Christmas. Thank you very much.